Lesson 3.5, Interpreting the Discriminants is the uh, last lesson of the unit. Uh, this one's kind of interesting because what we do is we, uh, we learned about uh, the quadratic formula um, in the previous lesson. And now what we're going to do is we're going to basically be able to find a shorter way to figure out how many roots you have. All right? Rather than going all the way through the quadratic uh, equation, uh, we can now just simply, or sorry, the quadratic formula, we can simply just look at the discriminants. That's what we're going to talk about here. Depending on the quadratic equation, there are, I guess let's just say on, depending on the quadratic equation, there are three types of possible solutions. The expression b squared minus 4ac, so you might recognize that, is called the discriminant. Of the quadratic equation, because it discriminates among the types of possible solutions. So we're going to look at how this changes. So when we have um, two real roots, right, this is the scenario that's going to happen. The discriminant is going to be greater than 0. When we have exactly one root, I like to say this is where it bounces off, we're going to have it equal to 0. And when we have no real roots, essentially it means when it does not cross the x-axis, whoops, it's going to be less than 0. And I'll just give you a brief sketch here um, on the side. So two real roots could be something like this. It's two real roots because it crosses at two different spots. Those would be examples. Exactly one root will look something like so where it just bounces. This is basically considered a double root because it hits on the way down and on the way up. So it might look something like that. And then this would be the scenario when it has no real roots. It essentially just means it does not cross. All right, so those are the various scenarios that we could have. This is a very, very simple lesson. Uh, we'll take a look now at a couple examples. And the nice thing is, as you can see, is if a question simply just asks you for how many roots, it saves you a lot of time than having to go through the entire quadratic formula. All right, so let's give this a go. Without solving, determine whether the equation 9x squared minus 6x plus 1 equals 0 has 1, 2, or no real roots. So simply, I like to start out with figuring out what my a, b, and c are. Make sure you note that they won't always be in this order. So your a is always whatever the x squared term is. So I'll write a equals 9, b is whatever the x term is, it's negative 6, and c is your integer constant 1. So now we have b squared minus 4ac, and I'm simply just going to substitute into that. So substituting in, I have negative 6, all squared, minus 4 times 9, times 1. Simplifying now, I have 36 minus 4 times 9 is 36 times 1 is 36. And so that gives me 0. Now looking up on that chart that I had before, it's uh, plain to see that when we have it equal to 0, we can say that we have exactly one root. Oops. So therefore, there is exactly one root. All right, and again, that's simply just because it was equal to 0. All right, go to the next page. Uh, so those easy ones kind of look like so. Example 2, we'll focus on ones where we have a, uh, a missing k value normally. So it says example 2. Determine the values of k for which the following 2x squared plus 7x plus k equals 0 has no real roots. Well, the part I want to highlight here is where it says no real roots. What do we know about something that has no real roots? Well, we know that it must be, the discriminant must be less than zero. So I'm getting this information right from there. Okay. So we're going to try and figure out what that mysterious k is. And then we're off to the races here. So, start with what we know. We know that a is equal to 2, b is equal to 7, and c is equal to k. All right. So that is essentially what we're looking for. So substituting in now, we have 7 squared, substituting with brackets, 4 times 2 times k is less than 0. Simplifying now, 49 minus 8k is less than 0. Now I'm going to solve for my variable, solve for k. Move the 49 to the other side of the equation. We have negative 8k is less than negative 49. All right. Keep in mind here that when we divide by a negative 8 here, Something funky happens, all right? So uh, you might want to make note of this over here. 
but uh, whenever you divide by a negative and we have inequalities like less than or greater than those type of signs, the inequality is going to switch. So this is going to end up being k is now greater than 49 all over 8. Okay. So what this means is if you were to go up here and pick a number that was greater than 49 over 8, all right, uh, let's pick a big one, but like 100. If you put 100 in right here, then you would find out that it would have no real roots. If you pick something that was less than 49 over 8, then that would be a problem. You would end up getting either one, uh, one root or uh, two roots. Okay. So, next thing it says, use one value of k to write an equation that has no real roots. Well, since we just found out that it has to be greater than 49 over 8, so remember that k must have been greater than 49 over 8. Well, 49 over 8 is approximately uh, 6. So I'm going to pick something that's a little bit bigger than 6. We could, for instance, pick something like this. 2x squared plus 7x plus, I'll pick uh, 7. All right? That would be one example. Note that there are infinite solutions that you could pick for something like this. All right. The discriminant is very easy. All it's used for is to figure out how many roots you have. You can, of course, have two real roots, and that's when it's going to be greater than zero. Exactly one real root, and that's when it's equal to zero. And no real roots, that's when it's less than zero. That concludes this short lesson. Uh, you're now ready to move on to the review. Uh, make an appointment uh, once you've passed your quizzes to see me on the hot seat, and then write your unit test.